The JSN seeks to be a supportive resource to our member schools, and this video is designed to be just that, a carved out space to listen, learn, and engage. We are eager to encourage a spirit of inquiry across the many layers of our work in Jesuit education. We envision our particular brand of Ignatian inquiry to be the art of inquiry as seen through our Ignatian lens, asking questions and exploring issues that matter in our schools through the frame of our shared Jesuit mission. My name is Eric Clayton and I am the Deputy Director of Communications for the Jesuit Conference of Canada and the United States, which means I get to do all sorts of fun things like co-host our weekly podcast, AMDG, a Jesuit podcast, uh, write a weekly email series, interview all sorts of folks for, for video and audio, and uh, just do a lot of very fun creative things that are at the intersection of spirituality and, um, and storytelling. Um, and I'm also, also the, the author of this new book, Cannonball Moments, Telling Your Story, Deepening Your Faith uh, by Loyola Press, um, which is the same thing, sits at this intersection of spirituality and storytelling, which is something I've, I, I've always loved and um, I'm excited about and uh, have, have gotten a chance to really think about in, in different ways, whether at my, uh, current, uh, my current role, as I said, or, or in past roles at Catholic Relief Services or, or working with Mary Nolley missioners or um, just my own prayer life. Uh, a couple other things, I, you know, I live in Baltimore, Maryland uh, with my wife and, and my two young daughters. Uh, so folks that uh, uh, maybe follow my weekly uh, reflection column uh, probably know a lot about my those two little daughters of mine who give me a lot of great uh, kind of raw material uh, with which to pray and, and reflect. Um, and uh, I love I love Star Wars. That's another thing uh, you should know about me. So if you uh, if you look in this frame, you might uh, be able to detect detect that uh, that passion. So Cannonball Moments, um, as, as the title suggests, is a, is a really a meditation on spirituality and storytelling. It, it, it kind of explores this intersection. You know, what does it mean to, to layer our spiritual lives over the stories of our lives? You know, what happens? What, 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 do, we, what do we learn as a result? Um, and the book is, is meant to really be a, a retreat for the reader, uh, an opportunity to, to do that kind of hard work uh, as, as you read, as you go. Um, you know, how is God at work in my story um, in ways that I didn't realize or in ways that I haven't really spent enough time uh, praying with or reflecting with? Uh, you know, who are the other people in my life that are, that are important to my story and why? So spirituality and storytelling, a retreat. And, and finally, uh, it's an opportunity for me to share a little bit of my stories. And, and that might not be super important to people who, who say, who's this guy? Uh, but I think it's, again, it's, you know, we're all in this together. Uh, some of my stories might resonate with you. Uh, and, and you might see some of yourself in those stories. Or uh, it might be a great leaping off point for you to, again, dig deeper into how God is, is at work in your own life. Um, you know, I think storytelling, you know, it, it feels trendy, right? But, it, but it's really very old, as, as old as civilization. Um, and so it makes sense that we would look in, in stories, in the stories of our lives, the stories of, of our community, of our world, uh, and, and expect to find God there, right? And, that, and that's true. God's, God's story is, is constantly unfolding. One of the things that I, I uh, really like reflected with, prayed with uh, while writing this book is, you know, we're, we're made in the image and likeness of God, right? And that's, that's you know, it's, of course, you say, of course. Um, but, but God is a God that creates and, 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 and God is a God who, who, who weaves these stories. And so we're made in the image and likeness of a storyteller. Uh, and, and that creative energy, um, is something that we should expect to see in ourselves. That, that, that weaving of stories is something we should expect to see in ourselves. It's a divine, uh, attribute. And so I think that's, that's something I hope to people will, will encounter in this book. And so I think to that, to the, to the final point I would make on this is, is that, um, you know, who is this book for? Well, the book is for anyone who who is is trying to unravel their own stories. And I think when we when we, you know, that's a kind of kind of a cutesy way of saying, uncover your vocation, deepen your engagement with your vocation. Who are you called to be? Who are you called to become? Um, as as your life continues to unfold. Um, and so, you know, this book is for 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 people that are really um, seeking and searching and 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 trying to make sense of of stuff that raw stuff of, of life. I think the, the quick and dirty answer to like what inspired this book um, is, you know, we, we put the word Ignatian in front of so many things. So why not storytelling? You know, why not have something called Ignatian storytelling? You know, and that, that answer is only partially in jest. Uh, you know, the, the longer answer is, uh, you know, begins when I was an undergraduate student at Fairfield University, great Jesuit school up in Connecticut. 
um, we, during my second year, we, we lived in a, a residential college um, that was kind of guided by these three questions. Who am I? Who is am I? Who am I called to be? That was how we framed and structured the entire year experience, the classes we took, the retreats we went on. You know, there was on the walls of the hallway. You couldn't miss it. And then I spent more time with those questions two years later when I came back as a, as a resident assistant. So those questions have, are really kind of ingrained in my, in my thinking. And then several years later, uh, I was doing my, my master's work at uh, American University in, in Washington, D.C., um, in, in the program in international media. And, and we were introduced in a, in a course on international communication uh, to the work of Marshall Gantz, uh, who is a, a lecturer and a, um, does a lot of writing and thinking on, on public narrative. So you're thinking really about kind of political, uh, secular storytelling. Uh, how do we inspire people? And he, he breaks his, his public narrative uh, thinking into three parts. The story of self, the story of us, the story of now. So the story of self, who am I? Who am I as a leader? Who am I in this moment? What skills and expertise do I have that I bring? Uh, public uh, uh, story of us, who am I in community? Who am I responsible for? Uh, who, who am I responsible to? And then the story of now, what, what's urgent about this moment? The science of the times, right? For, for lack of a better word. The more I thought about this and, and, and kind of used his work in my, in my, my research and my writing, I thought, you know, these are the same questions that we asked at Fairfield University in an Ignatian context. Who am I? Story of self. Who is am I? Story of us. Uh, who am I called to be? Story of now. How am I being called to answer the needs of, of today, of this moment? And I, you know, as I was again thinking with it, I was like, man, there's such spiritual depth here. And Ignatian spirituality, full of all of these um, wonderful, you know, storytelling principles, really can, can help us go so much deeper with this public narrative framework, which I found so helpful to, to really thinking about how I could, you know, measure up and address the needs of the moment. That's really where this, this uh, the kind of the structure of the book came from and the questions I wanted to ask. How can we use these, you know, very, um, kind of tactical, uh, you know, bread and butter storytelling principles in a way that's going to both help us internally and externally in the world. How can we be contemplative and act in the world? And again, just there, that's how the book is, is made up full of these Ignatian principles that I think are just, you know, so plugged into storytelling. I mean, the, the examine, right? The examine is what was the story of my day and where was God at work? Um, you know, imaginative prayer is how am I putting myself in the story of God and Jesus's story, walking with Jesus. So it just made sense. And it was, it, it, you know, it was, I think, a fruit of my prayer um, and, and, a, and a real, you know, pleasure to be able to kind of meditate and pray with this stuff. Um, and then ultimately to say, um, how, how is this helpful, not just to me, but to other people? That's what a book has to be, right? A book, a book isn't, you know, it's not, it's not a diary. It's a book um, that I want other people to be able to, uh, to benefit from. That's where that retreat uh, kind of mentality comes in. I think there's something inherently resurrection oriented uh, in our stories, our stories of self. Um, if we add in this layer of spirituality, you know, I think, uh, you know, what, what are our, our stories pointing to? Is it all just kind of random chaos or is the spirit at work nudging, directing, whispering, right? I think that's, that's a question we have to ask ourselves as, as spiritual beings. Um, and if so, if it's the latter, then, you know, even the hardship of these last, you know, many months, you know, a couple of years, pandemic, loss, uh, grief, sacrifice, right? It, it, it drives us towards something. Uh, and, and we see ourselves kind of walking in this Paschal mystery, walking alongside Christ. Again, imaginative prayer of Ignatian spirituality, uh, you know, it, it, accompanying Christ to, uh, to the cross in our daily lives. And we add that into our story. Uh, and we hope for for resurrection. We hope to be surprised. You know, I think part of in part of my own prayer of late, but but just as a story of of our God, of the Christian God, is a God of surprises. And I think nothing is more surprising than the resurrection. And I think in our daily lives, in our stories, you know, are, are we open to being surprised? Are we open to to having uh, the story go in an unexpected direction? Uh, to kind of you know crossing out and revising and and saying, yeah, I'm open to this this new chapter. You know, literally and figuratively. Um, there's there's a as a prayer I've been I've been praying with a lot uh, is prayer of Dej, uh, Pierre Desjardins Teilhard Desjardins uh, it's a real tongue twister um, I won't read the whole thing um, but I'll read a little bit of it and, and and you'll see kind of what I'm driving at so it begins uh, above all trust in the slow work of God we are quite naturally impatient in everything to reach the end without delay we should like to skip the intermediate stages we are impatient of being on the way to something unknown something new and yet 
It is the law of all progress that it is made by passing through some stages of instability and that it may take a very long time. And then it ends by saying, accept the anxiety of feeling yourself in suspense and incomplete. And I think if you know that prayer of um, uh, the Romero prayer written, not, not written by Oscar Romero, but, but often attributed to him and, and certainly um, uh, relevant to his, his story, those, you know, we're prophets of a future, not our own. We plant seeds, et cetera, et cetera. In, in the Desjardins prayer, the idea of, of, of that very word incomplete means there's something more. Are we open to finding out what that something more is? And it, it's hard. It's hard to be in suspense, as the prayer says. Um, but that's the story of our lives. I think it's the story of this moment, certainly. I, you, me in my basement with my with my two daughters running all over the place. You know, we're in suspense. We're full of anxiety. And yet we're incomplete because something is yet to come. And that, that's our story. So do we desire to participate in this work? Do we desire to see it through? Do we desire to be surprised by resurrection as, as, as you know, Jesus' story is, is, is full of, right? I think that's what we're invited to uh, as we pray with our own stories uh, and, and our, our spirituality of storytelling, uh, particularly during this, this Easter season. I think um, a lot of us have gone on retreats, you know, maybe Kairos retreat or some other retreat. Maybe we've led retreats, we've formed retreat leaders, we've guided small small groups, right? So we, we know that that sense. And I um and I, cert I certainly have. I've read about it a little bit in my book. But um, there's, a, there's a part in the book where I, I reflect on a retreat that I went on when I was a high school student. And you know, it was my first retreat, and and you, you go in thinking everyone said, "Oh, it's life changing." everything's going to be different when you come back. Like, you know, hold on to your socks. Cause like, my goodness, buckle up just to mix a few metaphors. Um, and I, you know, and the, the, so the retreat talks guy, you know, puts, puts on his guitar, he gets up there, he, he begins. And um, he tells us this, this, this story. I mean, very powerful story. He, you know, he had a drug addiction, sex addiction, all these things, you know, downward, upward. It, it was, you know, it was, it was a, he had a lot of tragedy and, and then a lot of triumph and, and it, you know, it ended well for him. Um, but I remember as a, as a young person, maybe, you know, 14, 15 years old thinking, well, I don't, that's not me. I don't see myself in that story. Uh, I haven't had those problems. So a number of, I think another number of questions follow, and they all certainly did for me, you know, many years ago. Um, do I need to do those things in order to have a story? Is God pulling me in that direction? You know, do I need to suffer in that same way? So, so is my story identical to that person's? Um, do I, uh, do, am I somehow less than because I've not had those experiences and don't want to have those experiences? So, so am I kind of avoiding a story? And I think most significant of all, do I even have a story worth telling? Because, you know, I, as again, as a high school student and, and even as an adult, like, you know, pretty humdrum, you know, normal, uh, you know, kind of a boring, boring story, you know, nothing, nothing is like of epic dramatic proportion. And I think that that you know, I've, I can have, I've, I've accompanied a number of retreat leaders or, or you know, leaders as they were, you know, preparing to, to, to lead a retreat. And, you know, I think you see a number of people struggle with, well, I don't have a story to tell. And, and, and what does that do to a person to internalize spiritually that they don't have a story, that God hasn't been speaking to them, hasn't been at work in their lives, in the, in the nitty gritty, mundane, humdrum moments, that God isn't there at work. Um, and what does it also do to a person to think that they have to tell a story on the extreme? You know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of value in that, of course, right? You know, healing through trauma, and we, you know, there's certainly, um, you know, therapy and, and various groups that, that help people process that. And, and that's where those stories, you know, can do a lot of good. Um, so I'm not saying that, that those stories don't have a place. But I think that we want to be sure that we're not inadvertently telling young people in particular, but anybody of any age, that, that they don't have a story or that their story is less than. I think that does such spiritual harm. And, and it's frankly a lie. You know, you tell a story on, you know, on, on the extreme um, because it's, it's, it's captivating and motivating and intriguing. But, um, you know, most of us don't live there. You know, I mean, some yeah. of us do, and, and it has to be dealt with. I'm not saying it shouldn't be dealt with, but it's, but it's um, most of us live in the middle. So how, how can we, um, or some, somewhere on that in the middle, how can we then, uh, you know, respond from that place, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and be told that we have something worth giving? Absolutely. I really hope that everybody leaves the book and you know, puts the book down and, and, and knows like deep in their soul, like I have a story and God has been at work in the story for all, for all of time. And it's important. You know, there's something unique about me 
in me kind of colliding with the events and experiences of my life that that is that is of infinite value and that God delights in that. So you know, I, I read um you know this weekly weekly email series I do. Uh, you know, a lot of people are very kind and generous and, and respond um, to, to, to these notes. And, and one of the things that I, you know, I kind of take away from these responses is that there's a real need to remind people that God delights in them. God loves them. But this isn't like a fire and brimstone, like, you know, like knock you off your horse. Like this is, you know, everything is terrible. But God genuinely, like, like God is love. And there's a genuine, um, we are made of that, of that God is love stuff. Um, and we forget that we forget that we, we just beat ourselves up. And I think that that that's a key thing to any sort of story spirituality of storytelling is is as we mine our own experiences uh, and our own stories to, to, to not be surprised by the fact that throughout our story, God is at work um, loving us. That doesn't mean there's not there aren't dark parts and hard parts and, 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 and seemingly uh, nonsensical um like how did this happen stuff like you know people people die people suffer people struggle um and there's no easy answer for that like you know but but again if you think of a good story a good story isn't one that gives you the easy answers a good story is one that gives you those surprises uh and again we should be surprised by resurrection in the end um you know and we kind of muddle onward i think that's i think that's it god delights in us we muddle onward and we're in it together and i think that's the uh i think that's like the message of the gospel um, but certainly something I hope people take away from the book as well. <laughs> so if folks want to learn more about me um, or, or, or read the book, I mean, you can just Google Cannonball Moments, telling your story, deepening your faith, uh, and you will come upon a myriad of ways uh, in which you can acquire a copy for yourself. Um, you also can visit ericclaytonwrites.com. Uh, and find out some more stuff, you know, some more of my writing. Uh, and if you're interested in that weekly column I've mentioned, uh, if you go to jesuits.org slash weekly, you can sign up uh, and get added to our list. We would like to thank Eric for speaking with us about Cannonball Moments and for sharing what it means to him to be an Ignatian storyteller. We now invite you to reflect on the following question and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Feel free to pause the video if you wish to allow yourself more time to think. The question is, where is resurrection in your story or vocation? Thank you for watching this edition to our Ignatian Inquiry video series. And don't forget to pick up your copy of Cannonball Moments wherever books are sold.